The ReDream Sega Dreamcast emulator is one of the best out there. Simple to use and when you get to premium, you get full 4K gaming action. So in this video, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the compatibility, the emulator as a whole. We're gonna see some gameplay on both the Raspberry Pi and a Android Shield. I'll also share you my experience on a mobile phone. But when you upgrade to the premium, it's about five to six dollars depending on where you buy it. You're able to upscale these games all the way to 4K resolution. And as you know, the Dreamcast was an awesome system with about 620 titles, and all of them definitely look a lot cooler with this upgrade. And now with most monitors and things going up to 4K, it's totally worth the upgrade. But let's go ahead and dive into it, see some footage, and see my thoughts. So ReDream is an awesome emulator. It works for both Windows and Apple computers, Android devices like the Nvidia Shield and your smartphones, and then the Raspberry Pi, and especially the Raspberry Pi 4, which can really take advantage of the higher resolutions that the Dreamcast, Dreamcast emulator can handle. As far as compatibility, it's one of the most compatible Dreamcast emulators out there. What I really like about it is you don't have to set up all the BIOS files and everything. You usually just install it throw some ROMs on there and it's gonna work. There's a full compatibility list on their website of the 620 or so Dreamcast games. As you see, 527 are playable. Um, six start, gets the main menu but doesn't start and fails to get the main menu is about 80. The only really big deal on this list that bothers me a little bit is Unreal Tournament. But other than that, it's running really great. Um, when I was recording this video, the uh, Android TV struggled a little bit with the um, Quake 3 Arena, but it was still emulating just fine. It just happened to be that my device uh, was not powerful enough at certain points, especially when there was a lot going on on the screen. But uh, Regime, it's a great emulator. It's free if you don't want HD. If you want to get that 4K uh, um, resolution, you do have to pay. It's $5 to their website. It's actually $6 if you go through the Android store. Uh, depending on how you want to get it, so five or six dollars, and I don't have a problem with that, especially supporting a great creator and someone who is uh, improving and making the emulator better over time. Think of it as coffee money to keep them motivated. So I'm all good with that. So let's go ahead and jump into some gameplay. So as far as getting this started on an Android device with our phone or something like that, just go to the Google Play Store and search Redream and then find it. And then it's free at first, but when you boot it up, you'll notice right here it says upgrade to premium. Go ahead and click that. You'll have to pay, you'll be charged about $6 or so. It might change. And then uh, once you're upgraded, it's the same front end. It's just now you have unlocked um, abilities to change resolution. So here I am, I go to video, then go to game resolution. You can go ahead and turn on game aspect ratio to 4.3 or 69 or stretch. 169 being widescreen stretch is just they stretch the image and then 43 is the typical aspect ratio i recommend 43 for most games but it's kind of cool to stretch some of those games out so now i'm upscaled to 4k and uh, i took this video once with a capture card i also took some video through my video camera which i know is 1080p but look how crisp that sega sign was things first thing is to show on my nvidia shield <clears throat> that display and sound i am on 4k just about 60 hertz I can easily jump down if I wanted to, go down to 80, uh, 1080, but we're gonna stay here. And this is the Vizio P series. If you wanna see this TV in action, I did a whole review on it, love it. Let's launch Redream, we're on the pro version, that's why it's not prompting us to do anything here. And let's go ahead and play some Mortal Kombat 4. If you hit the button to go into Redream set menu, you can see here on video, I'm running a 4, 3, 3, 200 by 2400. I could go up to widescreen and 16.9, but I actually think it looks a lot better just like this. For this particular game, for some games I like to stretch it, like Crazy Taxi, I like to stretch it. Look how good that looks. This looks really good right here with these photos. What what makes this so um Ooh. Get off me, bro. Get off me. Do you want some more? Look <laughs> at with those kicks. You see a lot of stuttering, but you don't see that at all on my TV. Oh. 
<laughs> okay. Get this tape though. Oh, my God. 
So here it is on the Raspberry Pi 4 through my TV, and at full 4K on Marvel vs. Capcom 2, I definitely see some lag, and I think that's just the Raspberry Pi 4. As you see, if I just lower it just a little bit, it's still HD, it runs smoothly very well. Also, if you rewind the video a little bit when I was playing Quake 3, that was actually through the Android NVIDIA Shield, which the majority of this footage is from, especially the Sonic that you're seeing now. And as you see, it runs most games perfectly. You can always look at that compatibility list um, if there's any known issues. The Quake 3, I think it was just maybe limiting out the NVIDIA Shield a little bit. If you have a PC with like an i5 or i7 and a decent GPU, these games that are, as long as they're compatible, are gonna run at full, not even a single frame drop. Um, but for this particular video, I know a lot of people have like a smartphone or NVIDIA Shield, and so I wanted to show you the full res. But um, it's definitely worth it. I would say in, in particular on a larger screen. When I tried it, on my, tried it on my phone, I didn't include it in that footage because it's such a small screen that, you know, yes, it gets rid of a lot of those jagged edges, but it really doesn't show off as much, to me at least, that when you're on like a 75 inch, 50 inch or bigger, you know, TV. Um, so with all that said, I'm really digging it. I think it's a great emulator, super easy setup, great controller setup, um, all around really good stuff and they keep updating it. So it's only gonna get better. So that's what I think. Let me know what y'all think. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.